Hi. It's been a long time since I made a YouTube video and I've been playing with NPR shading lately and I made a shader so why not show you guys how to make it, right? Uh, so I have a simple scene here with a UV sphere and a sun lamp. You can see what shortcuts I'm pressing uh, in the bottom left. I'm going to add a new material for this and I don't want the principal BSC. We're going to start the diffuse because it's easier if we start with specific properties, right? In this case, the base color. Uh, because it's supposed to be pretty flat right and i'm gonna make the color white because blender does this weird 0.7 something by default and i don't like it and we need to manipulate this so i'm gonna add a ramp but you can see that, that we can't actually do anything uh, with it because we need to convert this into rgb data and uh, that's where we're gonna add a node called shader to rgb right and what this node does is it takes the data, the shader data, and it converts it into color data that we can then manipulate with our color ramp. And if you look at this, ta -da! Uh, also, if you can't see this node, you're probably in cycles, or if it doesn't work, you're probably in cycles. This is a EV only technique, and we can't really do this shader in cycles because of the way cycles work. So it's EV only, right? Uh, so this is our base color and we are going to keep this aside. Next, let's do the actual cross hatching, the shading, right? Uh, hatching is basically a set of lines and uh, cross hatching is basically another set of lines just crossed over. We can use a cross hatch image texture for this, but I want to do this procedurally so that we can manipulate it however we want later, right? So I'm going to add a wave texture. And if you have Node Wrangler enabled in your preferences, make sure to go and uh, make sure to go and enable Node Wrangler here. So if you have it enabled, you press Control Shift, click on the node, and you can preview it. Right. Uh, so I'm gonna press Control T here and change this to the, use the UV coordinates, and ooh, it looks like a watermelon. But I'm gonna change this to like 20, maybe. Right. And uh, Pencils are not as uniform, so let's add some distortion. We can add some noise, some roughness to it as well. Yeah, I, I like something like that. It looks like it's like really etched there, right? Now let's do the second set of lines. So I'm going to duplicate these two and connect the same UV coordinates here. And if you preview this, uh it's the same so we're gonna rotate it like 50 degrees right and uh, now let's add them together by using a mix color node i'm gonna take the factor of this because we just need the black and white data not the color data i'm gonna take the factor of this and connect them together uh join them together here right but i'm gonna change them to multiply uh, and so that the dark parts get added and they're not squares. Maybe if I make this turn. Yeah, no, they're squares, right? I like them squares. Uh, okay, so this is our cross hatching, right? Now let's add them together by taking another multiply node. Make sure this is the cross hatching is on the top, is in the top input. Let's take the shader color ramp, connect it to the bottom input, and we will also take the color ramp and connect it to the factor, right? So this goes two ways. Uh, nothing should change. It should look the same as before. But if we take a mix shader and convert the colors into a shader, uh, make sure this goes into the top input, take the color ramp and connect it to the bottom input, and also take the color ramp and connect it to the factor. What you get is, ta-da! The cross hatching texture, the wave texture, should only be restricted to the darker parts, right? And it reacts to light. Uh, so if I rotate the sun, you can see that it changes along with it, right? And this is more or less what it is, right? Uh, and if you need, like, let's say, single line hatching, you just make both of these the same, and what you have is essentially like hatching right so now we have something like this which looks pretty nice right uh and, but let's add on to this i don't like this smooth gradient fall off here because 
you'd ideally want like a smudged pencil gradient something with noise in it so we're gonna add like a noise texture there just for this gradient part right so add a noise texture scale it up however you want add another color ramp and let's crunch it add some detail roughness uh, and you know get something that you like and we're gonna add another mix color and we're gonna mix the noise with the diffuse right so take the output of this color ramp connect it to the first input take the noise connect it to the second input and if you look at it it should look pretty bad right but I mean it looks kind of nice uh, but if we change this to soft light what you get is that you get the noise restricted only to this part and you don't necessarily have to use soft light you can also use like overlay uh, which is pretty strong you can also use linear light which is very strong right and you can also play with these values so feel free to play around and see which one works for you i like soft light best and i'm going to take the output of this noise connect it to the bottom of the multiply node here and also to the bottom of our mix shader and what we get out of that is like you can see that we are now having a noisy fall off in case you can't see it i'm going to like bump it up a bit like that and you can see that we have this uh, sort of a noisy fall off right and you can always change the settings of it and now if you look at it you can see that we can't really change the color of this diffuse this is no longer our base color it's more of a black and white value because of us changing it so how do you change the color of this so we're going to add another shader to rgb node here and we're going to add a mix color right we're going to add a mix color and if we take the shader to rgb node connected to the factor of this what what these va two values end up becoming is that one of them becomes the shadows and the other becomes the base color right or more like a highlight color right so you can now have like you can now play with the colors and uh, you know have something nice or you can just keep them black and white as per your preference uh, that should be black so now let's look at the amount of control you get with this setup right obviously you have the colors uh, we can add a value node here to change the scale of the cross hatching uniformly so we can just go we so you can change the scale of them uh, you can change the rotation orientation of them uh, if you if, if you keep them both the same right you get like single line hatching which also looks pretty nice and you can add another ramp here if you add another color ramp what you get is like a control over the strength of the shape uh, of the uh, waves and if you really crunch it you get like a uh, polka dot half tone pattern which also looks pretty good um, and you can also connect like a diffuse shader and run these through a bump node and get like a little bit of height map but I'm not gonna do that so we also have the noise which you can play with as much as you want uh, like we really scale it up and you get like pretty good a pretty good nice looking gradient over there and also you have this which controls the strength and size of the shading right so that is it for this video uh, if you liked it please give it a thumbs up so it would really support the channel uh, it would also help this video reach more people and let me know what you think in the comments below if you'd like to see more stuff like this make sure to subscribe to my channel uh, my shader will be available in gumroad soon if it's already available it should be in the description below if it's not if it, it will be available uh, soon and it won't be expensive if you like it you can get it it'll be like a small donation uh, that would keep the channel up and running right so um, go make a bouncing ball or something 
see you in another video.